Hey everybody, I'm Josh McFall, the CEO of the North Alabama MLS, the Huntsville Area Association of Realtors. Thanks for joining us. Facebook Live, we're gonna get started in just a minute. We're gonna let the audience build up just a little bit and tell your friends to, to sign on. We've got special guests with us today here in Huntsville, uh, the General Counsel from the Alabama Real Estate Commission, Chris Booth. Chris, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Uh, Chris just finished up a fantastic Lunch and Learn that our Education Committee put together today uh, from 11.30 until 1 here at the board. Kind of some of those highlights that, that you would hit for our folks who are in person here. Sure. Um, understand that the Commission's um, restrictions or application to social media is based on the advertising requirements. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing false, fraudulent, or misleading. Right. Same, same rules as a print. Advertising yeah. is what you're referring, right? Print, yeah. signage, yeah. Um, newspaper. Uh, so, uh, so those those restrictions in Alabama are really easy. Nothing false, fraudulent, or misleading. And a salesperson, associate broker uh, who uses their name in an advertisement has to use their company name, trade name, or broker's name prominently. And um, any advertisement for broker services has to be identified by as such. Mm -hmm. So to identify an advertisement for broker services, we consider putting the company name as adequate. Mm -hmm. So basically when it comes down to it, nothing false, fraudulent, or misleading, they put your company name in each and every advertisement that you make. How often are you seeing like a, a violation like this? Are they being reported a lot to you or? Yeah, I have a lot reported to me. Um, I very rarely ever have to prosecute under it because you know, people make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And so when they are reported to me, I'll call the licensee involved and, you know, go over the advertising requirements or restrictions and then have them look at their advertisement and tell me what's wrong with it. Mm -hmm. um, so that way they kind of build it in their brain as to what they need so to do. So you're going through it before they would actually get, like, you know, slapped with a, absolutely. With a request to come to the commission or anything like that, right? Yeah, absolutely, because, you know, if, if we were to charge every potential violation that we ever saw, mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't be able to make these trips. Right. <laughs> you, you told us something that was astonishing to me, 150 or so in your logbook every day of phone calls that you're receiving, is that? Uh, well, not every day. day. Uh, no, about uh, on a month. I, oh, I a keep, month, okay. I keep a still, that's a lot. Yeah, I keep a recording of the phone calls and emails that I receive in response, and I average, you know, 175 a month. Hmm. That, I, that I can get time to record that I've received and responded to. Hmm. Wow, you're a busy guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing with that. So, okay, let's go back to Facebook specifically, which is probably the most popular way that we all see uh, listings advertised. And so some great questions came out of the discussion uh, mm -hmm. a few minutes ago uh, related to that. Walk us through, um, so Facebook no longer allows you to put um, like Josh McFall Realtor on the, the personal page, right? You have to have a business page for that. Walk us through what that business page now looks like with, in terms of sharing a listing sure. uh, with the public. Um, so when you open a business page under Facebook and most social media, uh, you put your name um, and then you can use an extender on that under business pages. For instance, Chris Booth at ABC Realty. Mm -hmm. um, and that way, every time I make a post, then my company name shows up on that post. Mm -hmm. Now, alternatively, when I make a post and I say, you know, if my business page was just Chris Booth, mm -hmm. Realtor, um, and then I make a post just listed 101 Main Street, mm -hmm. then I need to put my company name in the body of that post so that when that post... So you, if you're putting a descriptor, like two bedroom, whatever, just descriptor in there, you could just put listing presented by or you could just put the name of the broker? Exactly. Okay. To, to let the consumers know that this is an advertisement for broker services. Where does the, the prominent display, where does that come into to play? Uh, well, on social media, not so much because mm -hmm. all the letters and everything are font size pretty much the yeah. same. Yeah. So, you know, you can't make it any more prominent than the standard font size. Um, but on other electronic advertisement or actually physical advertisement, um, you know, you don't want your company name to be the smallest font size that's in that advertisement. Mm -hmm. And certainly if it's an outdoor billboard advertisement, you want to be able to read the com company name from the yeah. distance. Well, it just makes sense too, I mean, for their business. You're just, you have rules that are practical from that sense, you know, mm -hmm. with that. <clears throat> Somebody asked a question 
in there about the qualifying broker sharing it without the, the qualifying brokers you know information on there can you answer that question again yes um, so <laughs> One of, the, one of the advertising thing is that you've got to have the company name, if you're a salesperson or associate broker, you've got to have the company name in there prominently. Well, we sweep the QBs in with the other requirement that all advertisement for broker services have to include, have to identify as being advertisement for broker services. So putting the company name tells the consumers that this is an advertisement for broker services, so we kind of sweep the qualifying brokers in that way. It's good to know so for the QBs out there that you know to think about it. How do uh, Instagram and Twitter and all the new? Because I mean, it seems like everywhere you turn, there's a new kind of advertising platform for realtors, at least. Uh, those new social media sites are advertising platforms. So the same rules are applying for Instagram. You mentioned about Instagram specifically. Yeah, same rules apply. Um, understand generally you view Instagram on a mobile device. Mm -hmm. And so you're really only seeing a picture. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't necessarily mean that you have to have your company name in each and every picture. But if somebody were to click on the picture to look at the Instagram post, mm -hmm. it needs to have your company name behind that okay. or on your Instagram page. So the same thing as Facebook, could they have their name on Instagram as the, the name of their brokerage, like it would be Chris Booth ABC Realty is the name? or Yeah, just like Facebook business pages, um, you could open your Instagram page as your name right. with your company's name as an Cause Instagram. A, that's a popular platform because it's pretty pictures. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, that's a, a lot of realtors take really pretty pictures of listings and it's a great platform with that. You gave an example about somebody doing something kind of inventive with signage. Yeah, on um, Instagram. I, I've got a, a guy a couple of years ago I ran across and I talked to him about it and he asked me if when I post a picture of my listing on social media and I always include my company sign in that picture, would that suffice instead of putting an extender on my name or putting the name in the post, body mm -hmm. of the post? I said, as long as it's legible, yeah, it, it's, a, it's an interesting way to do it. It doesn't put additional information in the body of the post or the title of your Facebook page, uh, but it still fulfills the requirement of license law. Mm -hmm. I've also seen um, like those wraps and those like header things that mm -hmm. go in a picture now that can identify the, the company or even some of them have the, they get fancy with the agent's picture and the contact info and those kind of things. That would qualify as well, right? Absolutely. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, doesn't matter. That would work. Yep, absolutely. They, so, um, some of them put little transparencies. Yeah. Um, I'm not, like a layer over it. Yeah, a layer over it just okay. to have their company name. The other thing I like about that is that when somebody tries to use that picture for something else, they mm -hmm. can't get the transparency off. Right, right. So, um, you know, counter to that too, we should think about MLS rules. So if you're thinking about the sign that he just gave the example of, you can't have your sign in your listing photos on the MLS. Oh. So against the MLS rules. So take that as a separate, <laughs> as a separate post, right, for Facebook or Twitter, but don't put it in the MLS like, oh, like that. Yeah, you can't have those identifiers within the MLS. Okay, there was a really fascinating discussion about yard sale sites, which I've, I've, I've seen this, but someone was really smart and asked this question. And, and uh, I understand, Chris, if you know what we're talking about here, there's Facebook yard sale groups, right, that are like you go on there and sell your, you know, giveaway cats or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they do, but everything. But somebody asked you a question about, you know, what do you do when there's a, you know, Three bedroom, two bath with no indicator posted by Sally Jane on there on mm -hmm. the yard sale site. How are you doing? How many, how, wait, how many groups, how many yard sale groups? I want this to be on camera. How many yard sale groups are you a part of? I, over a hundred, <laughs> I think, because what happens is. If you need to sell something, invite Chris, right? Yeah, if, if somebody um, see a, another licensee sees an ad that's being placed by a licensee, a real estate agent, or a realtor, mm -hmm. um, they'll screenshot it and send it to me. Yeah. So I try to track back the original post. So I will go and ask to join that yard sale group with that original and post. Like, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> and, they, and they let me in, yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm a member of all kinds of yard sale groups mm -hmm. just because it, it you know, I track this stuff. Yeah. And then Somebody gave the example, though, that they had responded, and then the person said, well, you know, they asked, you know, on the post, would you like to work with a realtor? And they responded, well, I'm a realtor, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's a big false advertising a bit, right? I mean, it's misleading to the consumers when it's, someone's posting like that. 
it certainly is, and it certainly fails to notify the consumer that's an advertisement for Burper Services. Right. So what you know, what I told them in the meeting was take a screenshot of it and send it to me, mm-hmm. um, and then I will dig up the original post and and um, have a discussion with the licensee, so yeah. that they you know go forth and and not do it again. Good. Any uh, anything else besides social media? I know we covered that pretty um, pretty good, but mm-hmm. there's a uh, a handout that you gave to the folks that we can post. In the comments uh, below this, we'll post that handout so that anybody who wasn't able to be here, you can, you can go check that. So look for that later on today uh, in the comment section. Anything else? Um, I know you spent some time talking about the estimated closing statement that you just wrote an article on. You're also about to write an article on coming soon uh, listings as well. Anything, any highlights you want to hit of that? I'm not going to put you on the spot with those. Yeah, things, um, our newsletter comes out four times a year. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully after you read the disciplinary, Mm-hmm. which is what everybody does first. Right. You'll go to our article that's briefly legal um, and look at what Josh is talking about. Uh, the last article was about uh, estimated settlement statements, also known as net sheets. The next article I expect to be about coming soon. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the net sheet one, I, I was just trying to get across because we're getting a lot of questions having to do with variance testing because I think other aspects of the real estate business um, they were concerned about variance testing under TRID. Mm. And so it's kind of leaking over to realtors or licensees yeah. um, that they're worried about us variance testing those net sheets. And I, what I've continually told everybody since this has started popping up is put to the best of your knowledge any information that you know about F, about cost in the transaction to inform the consumers. Yeah. Um, Good practice on everything. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, right. So... Um, but you know, look for those articles. Mm-hmm. They're indexed on. You got them website. archived, right? All the way back to when did you say ninety six? Ninety six. Now, of course, I wasn't here then. Right. Those were Charles's old right. articles. Right. But they're there unless the law has changed. Right. You can still go back, which is a great resource. Mm-hmm. What's the website? Um, a R E C. dot Alabama. And Alabama spelled out. dot gov. Okay. A R E C. dot Alabama. dot gov. I'm sure, all of you've been there. If you need to renew your license, I hope mm-hmm. you've been to that site, right? Yep. Uh, to do so. All right, so um, any questions coming in on the feed? Have you seen any? So if you have other questions, Chris will be around and we can contact him or you can contact uh, you at the commission, right? Mm-hmm. If you want to give a phone number or anything or maybe not give a phone number, I don't know. <laughs> Consider a number of calls, I guess. Yeah, with that being um, number but it, of It's chris.booth at arec.alabama.gov for my emails. Um, and our, my phone number is on the website, um, so you can certainly dig that up and, and give me a call. I'll be traveling. I won't be back in the office until tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Um, but if you leave a message, I will return your call. Great. Thanks for taking the time to be with us in Huntsville. I know the Lunch and Learn folks got a lot out of it. I hope folks on the video got a lot out of it, too. And um, he's available and a great resource for us. And the whole Real Estate Commission is there to work for the consumers and to protect our industry um, as well. So thanks for watching, and uh, hope to see you soon.